Hello everybody, it's Megan Graham and I am here with my little Yorkie Poppy. I just wanted to come on today to say hello and for those of you that don't know me, um, my name is Megan Graham and I have three Yorkshire Terriers. We actually travel full-time in an RV. So we are in our 36-foot travel trailer RV right now. Time And we also have two Siberian cats that we travel with. So we've got a lot going on in our travel trailer. And I thought I would come on today. I get asked a lot of questions on streams where we talk about grooming. And I wanted to see what everybody was interested in about today. It is already saying that my connection is unstable, which is funny because we've got, um, if you can see behind us, it's totally clear skies and we have a pretty wide open space, but we're using Starlink. So sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. Um, if you guys are joining today, I would love to hear who is on the live stream, where you are from here today. Um, so one question that I get asked a Combs. So actually, I use, I'll, I'll be more specific. I use three combs. And one of my combs, they're all very small combs. I think they're about probably four inches, maybe four and a half inches. So one of my combs, I'll try to hold it here so you can see it better, has a finer side and a larger side. I always start my grooming with the larger side so that I'm not pulling anything when I'm getting out their little tangles. As I get more of their tangles out, sometimes I use them. And then when I am cleaning out their little mustache area and their little eyes, I just so I can tell you guys the exact, will tell you the exact URL. And if anybody wants me to add the URL later, I'm always happy to do that. Just let me know. Um, so it is www top line pet. So it's top line pet.com. And if you go to, there's a section called combs. So you want to go to the section called combs and the, let's just see if they actually still have, they may not even have the little tiny comb that I buy anymore. I'm just going to look and see if they still have it. I haven't been on this site for a while. Um, I usually do stock up on my combs because they tend, oh, it looks like the really tiny comb. They may not actually have it in stock anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like the only one that they have at this point is the Madden Dash Comb 4.5, and it's $12. Um, it is almost at the bottom of the page. And then I also buy my Madden Steel Tail Comb. So the tail comb is what I use when I am styling their hair, when I'm doing their little ponytails. So I do buy both of those combs from there. I actually bought most of my grooming products from there. I also buy their little band scissors there and they have just a little, if you can see it, they have a little curve at the end. So you just slide it right under the ponytail so that you can cut the bands without cutting their hair, which is something that you don't want to do. Um, Kamini says, my Yorkie turns six months tomorrow. He just lost his, oh, he just lost his baby teeth in one week. He has, he had his first little grooming visit and next month you're getting his sister. That's so exciting. Um, and it's a chocolate Yorkie, but you feel like you should have waited since they don't have them. They say don't have them close together just in case they might go around the same time. That's what I kind of always say, but yeah, I already, I do have two from the same litter. So if it works out and you get two around the same time, you know, whatever works for you is definitely the right thing to do. Hi, Jackie. It's so nice to see you. Um, we are in a beautiful park today. It's It's been so nice. And we were actually in Arizona visiting Jeff's family. So for, for those of you that don't know, I am married to Jeff and we travel full time in a travel trailer with our three beautiful, I'm going to tilt this screen down. I'm always adjusting things when I'm sitting here. So we travel with our three beautiful Yorkies. This is Poppy. She's my little shy girl. Um, and she's actually been really enjoying this park for some reason. She seems pretty happy. She's not quite as anxious as she usually is. And we've been taking her out on some really special walks just to make sure that she has plenty of exercise to try to reduce any anxiety that she might have. Um, because Poppy does tend to get a little bit more than our other dogs do with traveling full-time. 
Um, what's interesting, is although we do travel full time, we're not always on the road. So we are currently living in a travel trailer and it's a 36 foot travel trailer. So we've got actually a lot of room. Although I will say the only time that I feel that we don't have a lot of room is when I want to do something like this, like a live stream, because technically I usually have to either kick my husband out of the trailer. So he's golfing right now because we're actually staying on a golf course. Um, but I always have to sort of, whoop, I'm just going to turn off my stove guys, excuse me. Um, I always have to clear things out to have a little bit more room to do what I feel like doing or what I need to do with my work. So he's out doing something else. Um, I think doing my YouTube is the one really challenging thing in a travel trailer. So yesterday I filmed a video and um, it's just, even though I think our trailer is great, it's not really the best place to film like a beauty video or um, I wanted to share my new favorite foundation and setting it up in a small space is definitely challenging compared to the place that I used to have for sure. Oh, so cute. Simply Sophie says, hi, and hi, Simply Sophie. I adopted my first Yorkie a couple months ago, and your videos have really helped. I'm so glad. That makes me so happy. Um, I try to just put together some easy things that make it, I, you know, teach people some of the things that I did not know when I first got a Yorkie. So the other day, I had two of my nieces with me in the trailer, and they really wanted to help me give the Yorkies a bath. And I was able to put on my video about how to bathe a Yorkie to prep them on how to bathe a Yorkie. And of course I explained things too, but they really enjoyed watching the video and seeing you know, what I did. So I always start and I just brush back Poppy's hair as gently as possible. We usually take off her little harness too. We just took them on a walk for about 45 minutes around the park. They were really enjoying themselves. Although I will say that they were barking. Love this harness, by the way. I know you guys know, but I love buddy belt harnesses. And I didn't think I would like the orange, but I really think it's cute. It's been working out really well. Um, another question a lot of people ask me is how I'm able to get my dogs to stay on their backs when I'm grooming them. And the answer to that is that it took a while and some days it's also easier than others. So one thing that I try to do is if I do want to groom my dogs like this, where they're, they're actually facing me so I can really see what's going on with the eye area, I keep it really, really quiet. And to be totally honest, that means my husband cannot be in here most of the time when I'm grooming. Um, since he's not the one that does the dog grooming, he tends to like walk through really fast, scare dogs, um, slam our metal cabinets, drop stuff. And I'm always like, Jeff, you've got to be more relaxing. The dogs get so stressed out. So a lot of times it's easier if I do their grooming when he's not here because any kind of banging or loud noises when your dog is on their back, they're going to feel really vulnerable and you're going to have a really hard time getting them to stay on their back. Um, and if your dog just really can't stand it, then I suggest not trying to do it. I think it's always good to do whatever your dog, I mean, Kind of let your dog decide. So I'm not saying that your, your dog should be the boss for every single thing that you do, but if your dog really dislikes something and feels uncomfortable, I just think you don't want to do that thing. I mean, it's, it's something that if they don't like to lay on their backs, then you could, you know, put a towel down on a coffee table and you could comb them there. There's always an alternative and there's not only one way to do things. So my way isn't the only way. I think whatever way your dog is the most comfortable and that you can be the most gentle and consistent is for sure the very best way to do it. Hi, Marcy. It says, what size are your pup's harnesses? My Yorkie always wears extra small clothing and her other harness is extra small. So these don't come in extra small, Marcy. I would definitely recommend measuring them. Um, Poppy, Poppy wears a 2.5. Sometimes I think Lola could wear a two. Um, it depends on what her weight is. She's really skinny right now. Um, and then a, Alfie wears a 2.5 as well. It's a little bit tighter on him. Um, but I would definitely say to just check out, 
I don't know. I don't remember, to be honest, what size clothing my dogs wear. Um, I do think they're somewhere usually between four and five pounds. But since we live in a trailer right now, and we're traveling. I haven't really weighed them lately just because I don't weigh myself either. So I don't even keep a scale around. Um, I don't have an opinion on the Stella and Chewy dog food. I've never researched it, so I really couldn't tell you if it's good or bad. Um, I always tell everybody that I suggest doing your own research, and um, I always suggest if you Google the truth about pet food, there is an ebook called The Truth About Pet Food, and that is really where I learned most about pet food. And for me, if it's not on her list, I personally would not buy it, and you'll find that most of the major dog foods are not on there. That one could be on there. I just, I don't know. So I feed my dogs Evermore and I am a huge fan of Evermore. Um, I do include the link down below in the description of the video and you get 10% off if you use my link. Um, and I just, I love that food. It's fresh, it's organic, um, it is great quality and it's really helped my pet's health. So that's the only one that I use. So I really didn't research every single, I mean, I researched a lot of different kinds. I just don't remember every single one that I researched. And once I found one that I liked, I didn't go and research all of those, but I will say that the woman that wrote the book is great. I think it costs about $10 to buy her ebook and it is well, well worth it to buy her ebook. So I already brushed her face a little bit and I'm just gently removing her little, her little gunkies that she's getting around her eyes. Um, I just started my dogs on a new supplement. I'm starting it at a very, very low dose. And I actually started them on a, um, it's a chew by a company called Real Mushrooms. And it is, um, I'm giving it to them to help not only detox them, but also as um, cancer prevention. So obviously there are no guarantees that it's going to prevent cancer, but I take a similar supplement um, for myself because I had mold exposure and when you're removing mold, it tends to filter through your kidneys. So it's not unusual to get kidney cancer, which I very much do not want. Um, so I always think that the easy, not to say that it's easy not to get cancer, but it's easier to do things to hopefully try to avoid cancer than to treat cancer. So I am giving my dogs a supplement now. Um, and it would seem that their eyes are they're definitely getting a little bit of extra gumminess as they remove some of the toxins from their body. So it's working. Um, I'm just doing it very sparingly. So right now they're only getting it once a week because I don't want to try to detox them too strongly. Their little bodies um, have been through a lot. So for anyone that is new, and if you have not been here before, my name is Megan. I've got three Yorkies, um, two Siberian cats. One's a kitten, one's a big cat and a husband. We travel in a trailer. Part of the reason that we are traveling in a trailer is that we all got pretty sick from a moldy apartment. And even in a pretty healthy apartment, we were having trouble getting better. So we are traveling full time and I am taking care of my pets and supporting their health while we travel um, to improve their health after a pretty bad mold exposure. So they're all doing super well. And as you can see, they're, I mean, I think they're beautiful, but I'm also their mother. Um, Thanks so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. The list is so good, Marcy, isn't it? I mean, I was really blown away. So when I first read the book, The Truth About Pet Food, I was so blown away because the brand of pet food that I was using at the time, I really thought was great and it was expensive and I didn't know any better. And Lola started to have um, pancreatitis attacks. And I think one day she threw up seven times in one day. It was something she developed after living in the moldy apartment. Um, but I was really just looking for, you know, how could I manage her pancreatitis? Because it's obviously not a good illness to have. So the way that I found that book was really just trying to manage Lola's pancreatitis. Um, so I don't know how interested, guys, are you interested in seeing any of the other things that I use? A lot of the things that I have in my grooming kit are simply um, rubber bands and things like that. Like for instance, I've got, this is from Top Line Pet as well, and I get scrunchies. And so after I give my dogs a bath and their hair is still wet, I usually just put it up in a little scrunchie when it's drying so that it does not break. Although I usually style when their hair is dry, I style them 
with these little elastics that I also got from Top Line Pet. I don't like to use those on wet hair. Um, if you guys know, you should never put in a, um, and for those of you that don't actually, um, was a hairstylist by trade. So I have a little bit of expertise when it comes to keeping hair healthy. And Jackie says two of my Yorkies will lay on their backs, but my youngest will fight against it. I have to take his grooming very slow and gentle, or he will have a tantrum and make it difficult. And, you know, and that's the great thing, Jackie, that just that, you know, you know, your dog and you know exactly what your dog likes. So for instance, Poppy is my easiest puppy to groom. She loves it when it's time to be groomed. She loves attention. Um, she runs right out when she sees my comb. Lola can't stand it. So Lola will hide under the dinette. She'll do anything she can to not be groomed. So it's great to know what your dog is like. I mean, with Lola, I have to be very careful with her legs and she usually likes to be standing. With Poppy, I can brush her legs when she's upside down. She'll let me do almost anything. And with Alfie, he hates to have his face groomed. So he turns his head away from me as far away as he possibly can. Guys, if you're just joining now, please feel free to hop into the comments. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, let me know if you have any questions about grooming your Yorkie, um, if you're running into any things that you are having issues with. I do have a lot of my links to my favorite grooming stuff below um, in the description. I try to include things in the description, but I do need to go back and add some other things that I frequently talk about. As you can see, we are in an RV park and we've got an RV driving right behind us. Um, this is a really nice park that we're staying in. I feel like most of the people are retired here, so it's nice and quiet. And there's dogs, but not too many dogs. So it is really, really pleasant for us to walk around and um, just check things out at the park. And surprisingly, I wasn't expecting it to be super healthy simply because we are staying on a golf course. And I always think of golf courses as using so many chemicals but I do bring a little air quality monitor and the air quality has been actually wonderful. Um, we even went, we went out to, there's a little tiny town and we went out to get Mexican food yesterday and it was, it's a cute little town. Um, but we are moving on tomorrow to our next place. We're going to go somewhere so that my husband can play a little bit of golf. Although he's playing golf right now too. So just a different place to play golf and I'm not playing golf. Do I cut my Yorkie claws um, myself? You know, I actually don't cut their claws at all. I just make sure to take them on enough walks on pavement so that the pavement, it wears down their claws and I don't have to cut them. I do cut my cat's claws, but I don't ever cut my, um, my dog's claws. So I've never had to do so. Um, it's just really for me a matter of always making sure to take them on a little bit of pavement. And especially where we've been staying, we've been lucky in that there has been quite a lot of pavement. And when we lived, for those of you that don't know, before we started traveling full time in an RV, we were living in Boston, Massachusetts. And it was really easy to, to take them on the pavement then because our favorite park that we always walked in was, um, it was the Boston Public Garden. And so that wore down their claws every single day. Um, I was just commenting to my husband, though, the other day and saying that it's actually so nice not to live in Boston anymore for a variety of reasons, but um, especially because it was just so congested. And every time I went for a walk, there were so many dogs, there were so many dogs off leash. And I personally find it so much easier to walk my Yorkies. Um, pretty good. I mean, they don't have their dogs on a leash. So all in all, I've enjoyed, she's got a little tangle here. I don't think I did a great brushing the past few days. Just checking. Yeah. Her little, her little claws are not long at all. So they've been wearing down nicely from our walks, which is, oh, don't you look nice. Let's show off how nice you look. Look at that little face. She is definitely my little shy girl. Um, she sometimes gets a little bit nervous when I do my YouTube live stream, but today she doesn't seem too nervous at all. I'm going to put Poppy down and maybe I'll get Lola. Poor little Lola. We actually, so we went on a walk already today and I had not, I had not, um, brushed their faces yet. And she had 
quite a lot of eye gunk in her eyes. So I'm going to take care of, I took care of a little bit of it on our walk because I felt so bad for her that she had so much. I think she was almost like having trouble seeing. So I fixed that for her. Um, will I ever go back to living in a house? Yes, I definitely will go back to living in a house for sure. So I will say that I love living in an RV, which is unexpected. Um, I thought I would like doing it. This is Lola, by the way, guys. She is Poppy's sister. Um, they look really, really similar, but Lola's face gets a little bit dirtier and she's a little bit smaller. I've had Lola for a year and a half longer than I had her sister. Um, her, the breeder had kept her sister back to be a show dog. And when she retired her, she asked me if I knew anyone that wanted Lola's sister. And I said, absolutely. I do. Um, so they have, it's really nice that the sisters get to be together and they are definitely best friends, but they do have distinctly different personalities for sure. So, um, yes, I will absolutely, um, go back to living in a house at some point, although I love living in a trailer and I think we will probably keep a trailer, um, especially for my health because I did get so sick originally from leave, living in traditional housing, which got moldy. Um, and just want to say, I don't think I only got sick from one thing, although mold was the, really the thing that made me especially sick. Um, so we will probably keep a trailer just in case we ever have an issue with the home that we live in, in case there's ever water damage or we need to do some remediation so that I always have a safe escape where I can get out of the house if I need to. Um, and also I think we're probably going to wind up living in Arizona and it gets really hot in the summer. So we may want to keep travel a little bit in the summer time when it's really hot. Um, I think we may get a house as early as um, probably late spring. Um, I would keep traveling if I could, but I think my husband is getting ready to want to settle down again. Um, it says tips on what feed Yorkies puppies. What do you mean? tips on what feed. Um, let me know more specifically what you're asking about. I am not sure, but um, let me know and I'll do my best to answer. Are you asking me what to feed? Um, if you are asking me what to feed, if you just came on, um, I was saying that if you want to know what you should feed your dog, I would get the, the ebook, The Truth About Pet Food. Um, if you Google The Truth About Pet Food, it will pop up and you can do your own research if that what you're asking. Guys, if you're just joining me, I'm Megan Graham and I've got three Yorkshire Terriers and I'm just doing a little bit of grooming. Um, is anybody interested in seeing any of the tools? I know and I'm happy to show what tools I'm using home grooming. For those of you that don't know, I groom my Yorkies at home every day to keep them under control. I did have an experience when I was first a Yorkie owner where I did not groom my Yorkie every day and I thought it was enough just to drop him off at the groomers. Um, he got very matted and the groomer, the new groomer that I dropped him off to actually shaved his entire body. So after that, I was always really careful. Um, and I think it's really bonding time for me and my Yorkies. Um, it also just makes it so, it is so much, <laughs> you're so cute, Lola. It makes it so much more comfortable for them to get their little hair kind of brushed out. They get a little head massage sometimes. They get some mommy time and they love it. Perfect. So, um, okay, Margaret, got it. Thank you so much for your answer. I appreciate it. What to give them because you are getting a Yorkie soon. And yes, you want to see the tools. So um, for sure, Margaret, I would get on and research the best puppy food. The best resource that I've ever seen is a, it's an ebook called The Truth About Pet Foods. And she's got great resources. She tells you how the food is sourced, um, what is good about the food, what is bad about the food. And what you'll see is that most commercial dog foods are not going to make the list. And that is because unfortunately, a lot of commercial dog foods have uh, feed grade food instead of grade food. And what feed grade means is feed grade food is not for human. And really the food that you feed your Yorkies, you want it to be as so good that even a human could eat it. Um, when people feed their dogs feed grade food, um, it could be dead animals, sick animals. Obviously all of those things could cause problems. 
our dogs. So I really appreciate you asking. I'm sorry that I don't have a puppy recommendation off of the top of my head. I am going to go on there and I'm going to research and find what food I would feed my puppy so I can include it in my links in the future because I'm getting that question asked. I wish I had a pen. I'm going to, I'm going to text this to myself right now. I'm getting, um, asked um, again and again what what food I would give my my baby Yorkie my baby. so I am going to research that now um, and let, well not now but you know later puppy food for Yorkies and then I'm going to add that to my to my links in a few weeks but until then I would research it um, yourself but sorry that I don't have an answer for you I just have not had I actually haven't had a puppy in so long. And I do feed my dogs Evermore, which I love for older dogs. And you can also use it as a topper. Um, but that said, just so you know, when you do take your Yorkie home, you initially, no matter what you're going to feed it, are going to need to feed it whatever the breeder was feeding it so that you don't upset your Yorkie's stomach. And then later on, once your Yorkie is more used to um, that food, then you can start to very gradually switch it to another food. Hello, Helena. It says I have a Yorkie six months old and her name is also Poppy. So cute. I try to brush her hair, but she is not liking it and is biting me. Her hair now is mad at the back. Should I just clip her hair short? Um, if it's really matted, you may need to start by clipping it. Um, the other thing that you could consider doing is using a detangling spray and just working on it for, you know, two or three minutes at a time. So I think sometimes people feel like they're going to get those mats out and they're going for it and they're going to do everything at once. Um, you could also very carefully use some scissors and cut the mats out. So you could very gently, very slowly free those mats up because once your dog is very matted, it's going to be hard to get them out. I will say that I am having a similar problem with my Siberian cat right now. And I know he's not a Yorkie, but matted hair is matted hair. And it is really because um, this summer I got really sick. And when I was really sick, I was not able to keep up with the grooming. I just could barely take care of myself and eat, etc. cetera. Um, and as I got better, I started doing more, but still not my regular chores and things. And so he is matted too, and I've been cutting the mats out. So you know what? Nobody's perfect, and we just do what we can at the time. But I would say, yes, you could do that, or you could very gently cut them out and just work them out little by little. Maybe just spend a little bit of time every day. Um, oh my gosh, of course, Margaret, it's my pleasure, and thank you so much. Um, I'll show you my little tools that I have. Unfortunately, they don't have one of... So I use this little teeny tiny comb and they don't have this one anymore, but um, I get these tools from a website called Top Line Pet. It's a really nice small website. I used to know the woman that owns it just online from a Yorkie website. She's great. Her stuff is really nice. If you go on the combs page, this is the smallest comb available. It's called a mustache comb and it's got, I'm seeing if I can show you the pattern. It's got a big side and a small side. This is a great comb to have. I also have a rat tail comb from her website. I use them putting their ponytails in. And I also buy my little cute scissors. She's got so many cute colors. So you're going to want all of those to be wearing bands. And then from the same website, she's got tons and tons cute little elastics in different colors. These elastics that she sells are not my favorite color, but they are the ones that stay in the best and snag the least. I buy her um, neon little elastics too, but I find them to be, they just snap and break out of nowhere. And then I buy her scrunchies, which I put on after they have their, um, their bath time so that I don't break their hair. Lola just got her little ponytail out. I cut Lola and Poppy's hair the other week and I cut I did part of Alfie's grooming and then it was sort of, I was a little bit distracted. So the past month we were staying at Jeff's family's house, which was wonderful, but there were so many activities to do that I never really got to finish my own stuff. So even though I miss them, it's to sort of be on the road where there's some anonymity and I can just really get back to my videos and, you know, my, my different things that I need to do. 
Absolutely, Helena. And definitely give yourself some grace because obviously you did your best. And I know how it is when you're dealing with a dog that does not want to be brushed. It's not easy. And even Lola tries to brush. She tries to bite me sometimes. She has no teeth, but she gets extremely frustrated with me. And I do know how it is. So um, definitely just try snipping them out because it might be hard to even shake them out at this point. So if you do it gradually and take a little bit of time. So say you work on a mat, then take a few minutes and kind of then give your puppy say, oh, now we're going to do a little bit of a massage time and just really relax them and then say, okay, now we're going to go back and we're just going to calm just a little bit and maybe do, you know, two, two minutes or one minute and then go back and say, oh, look at that. We're, what a good girl. We're going to do a little massage time. So anything that helps to relax your puppy and kind of trick your puppy into thinking, wow, this is really nice. I like this. This is great bonding time. Um, and Simply Sophie said, is that where you got the scissors to cut the ponytail holders? Yes, this pair of scissors is from um, Top Line Pet. I get a lot of my grooming tools there. Um, sometimes I get them from Amazon too, but the ones that I'm showing you are all from Top Line Pet. She's got great service and a lot, really, I think good prices on things too. I love her combs. They are really good quality. Um, Helena says, I have those combs and the tiny elastics. My poppy does not mind me doing her top knot every day. She just hates the brushing at the back. Um, how long is her hair, by the way, way Helena? Um, I, I wound up simply cutting their hair short because Lola has very... I cut it um, when I use my... When I use my clippers, I use a three on Lola. So I cut her back really short and it's because it just doesn't even seem worth it to me to put her through all the brushing. She just cannot stand it. So I just figure why have her hair long and not telling you what to do, but if it becomes easier, just cut that hair short and your dog will be so much happier. Um, oh my gosh, absolutely. Thank you for those nice emojis, Margaret. Um, it's my pleasure. Um, and is it true that they need kibble down all the time because of their sugar and seizures? Um, who told you that they were going to have sugar and seizures and, um, what age is the dog that we're talking about and, and who said that? So that would be my question. Um, I've never heard, I mean, I've heard people say certain things. Like I do think that puppies need to eat quite frequently, but, um, I've never had any issue with my dogs. Um, Teddy had seizures when he was older, but he was sick. And it turns out that it was a um, deficiency of his calcium. Um, and I'm trying to think that was the only dog that I've had that had seizures. I never had any issues with um, blood sugar either. Um, but, and I, I never feed kibble either. If there was a really healthy one, that would be fine. Um, Marcy says, does insurance couple cover dental cleaning? Also, what tips do you have to prepare to have your pups to be put to sleep for cleaning? Um, just a little nervous. Um, so my links below my video, maybe I do. Um, Trupanion doesn't cover dental cleaning, but it does cover extractions. So for the basic cleaning, no, it doesn't cover it. But I believe when they had extractions, that it did cover the anesthesia because they had to do extractions. Um, so yes, it covered part of it and it was enough that it made a really big difference. Um, it sure is expensive to get, to get it done. I really don't have any tips on how to prepare for your dog being under. My only tip would be just make sure that you know that you trust your vet implicitly, you know about the anesthesiologist, you, you think that they're going to do a great job. I mean, that's the important thing. I, I think, you know, there's no guarantees when any of us go under anesthesia, there's really no guarantees. We always hope that we're going to wake up, but I know it's very scary. Um, for those of you that don't know, I had a major surgery back in May and I remember I was reading the paperwork the night before and I was terrified, just absolutely terrified because I was, I felt like I was so sick anyway. And I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to wake up from this? The good news is I did wake up from it, but I also had a fantastic anesthesiologist and I fully, fully trusted him. So my biggest thing would be just make sure that you really trust the anesthesiologist, listen to all the doctor's instructions, um, you know, keep your dog healthy and hydrated the week before and all of those good things. Um, and this says, let's see, um, 
I'm in the UK and researched into pet food. I found an amazing company and their food is human grade. It's called cooked food and is delivered frozen. My Yorkies condition and temperament are great. That is so awesome, Jackie. I'm so glad that you found such good food and thank you so much for sharing it. It really makes a big difference. I mean, if I'm, I would hope that everybody knows that human food can be medicine too. And sometimes when I'm in the grocery store and I, I'm, I'm not trying to be judgmental, but when I see people's food in their in their grocery cart, sometimes I'm like, you can really see why everyone's so sick because so many people are eating food that's not real food. And it's so full of ingredients that are not real food. And, you know, that doesn't make us well. And so it's the same thing with dogs that when we eat healthful things, it does help our health as well. So um, I'm pretty picky because I'm, I'm really getting my health back from an illness. And it's been amazing how eating good food has made a big difference. And the more control I have over my food, um, the better I seem to get. So it's just the same with the dog. So thank you very much for sharing that, Jackie. I really appreciate it. Helena says her hair is about three inches long and she is four pounds. I will think about clipping her hair um, like how you have it. Her black puppy coat is growing out. And you know, you can always grow it back out too, Helena, like perhaps get her used to getting her hair brushed when it's shorter. Um, maybe even think about using a different conditioner. Is it not conditioned well enough? Is it too dry and it's getting matted? Because I know that that has happened to me in the past as well. Um, oh, your babies hate getting their hair combed. It's definitely not uncommon. That's for sure. Um, how, let's see, how old should puppies be when they first should be groomed? My puppy is 16 weeks and still so squirmy. Um, worried she will get hurt. Um, I do you mean groomed by you or groomed by a professional groomer? Because I think that it's those are really different things. Um, and my other thing is too, just same as with a vet, make sure you really trust that groomer too. Um, I think that sometimes we feel um, we feel funny asking questions or, you know, we feel like, oh, I don't want to seem rude, but you're dropping your baby off with someone. And I think it's very fair that maybe you want to meet that person and just see their personality and make sure that you feel safe leaving your baby with them. Um, not every groomer is gentle. Not every groomer is kind. There are lots of great groomers. Like there's a great, she used to be groomers harness. She calls herself something else on here. She seems like a very nice person, but not every person is just like that. And, and, you know, that's the reason why I decided to learn how to groom my dogs myself on the road, simply because I didn't want to try to find a new person in, you know, in a different city and trust that they were going to do a good job with my dog because, you know, maybe they would do a great job with my dogs or maybe they wouldn't treat them kindly. So don't be shy about talking to that person and just making sure that you do feel safe with them. Um, I would probably say just do basic things yourself and perhaps around like six months old, you could always drop your dog off for a little mini grooming. But I think at 16 weeks, they shouldn't need to go in for a grooming just yet. That seems really early. Um, it's been hard for me to even figure out how to get any services for myself on the road because we're always going to different people. And in Boston, I knew the people that would do a great job and would make me feel great. But for instance, I haven't been to a, my dermatologist. I'm going to fly back and see him probably in the spring. Um, I did this hair color myself the other day because I looked at my roots and they looked completely black. So I highlighted my hair and um, I had extensions in my hair, but they were so grown out. So my husband, Jeff, took them out. Um, and all we had to take my extensions out was pliers. So my beauty has fallen, fallen to the wayside a little bit. And so the dogs, there's no way I would just be trying to find them a new place everywhere I go. Right. Um, it says, sorry, I had one part of my comment above Margaret's in just different videos. I've seen people talk about Yorkies being prone to sensitive diets and that they should need access to food all the time. Um, I have not yet discussed it with my vet since I haven't received her yet. She'll be 12 weeks old when I get her. Um, and then it says repaste. Oh, I'm gonna go, let's see. It says hi from my me. Love, thank you. Watching your videos and your fur babies are precious. That is so nice, thank you. It says lost my mini schnauzer to cancer. Oh, and I'm getting my first Yorkie in a month. Um, paranoid about cancer and Kimball. So yeah, and I, and I don't blame you because I do, you know, I think there is a big, big link and thank you for repasting. Just so you guys know, if I ever don't answer something, it's not because I'm ignoring your comment and I'm sure I can tell that you know that. Um, just sometimes the comments, I talk a lot as you guys can see and then the comments keep going, so I miss them. Um, 
I think it's absolutely smart to be paranoid about cancer um, and kibble, because if you look at the ingredients, there's a lot of things in there that are not fresh foods. And the other thing too is, of course, if there's a lot of mycotoxin exposure, which is from mold, that can also have a link to inflammation and cancer. So a lot of kibble that is stored for too long could have mycotoxins on it. So at least if they're eating kibble, it's gonna be a really good brand and really as fresh as possible. Just some other things to think about. So um, I would also suggest watching my video on holistic dog care. Um, these are just my opinions and I can't tell anybody what to do, but as someone that had a dog that had an autoimmune and I have an autoimmune too, um, I avoid, personally, I avoid conventional flea and tick remedies. And I believe I have it, I may not have it in this video, but I may have it in the links. I use Dr. Dobius flea and tick um, holistic care instead of traditional care because flea and tick um, remedies are usually a neurotoxin, which is going to add to inflammation, which I mean, you don't want to put toxins on your dog. That's all I can say. So that's one thing to watch out for. And another thing that I regularly do because of cancer is I do um, a very gentle little dog detox. If you look, it's in my links. I think you can do it when they're puppies. Very, very, very gently, very small amount. It's called Polypet. And um, so I've got a link below in the description. And I really believe in doing that too. And I really always try to instill that in people that when you're detoxing your pets, it doesn't have to be because, you know, the, the pets or the people got as sick as I did. It's really to avoid that. And it's, you know, hopefully to lower the chances of cancer because it's much easier to, I don't want to say it's easy to avoid cancer, but I think it's easy to, and I wish people knew this too. It's, it's easier to lessen your exposures to things that are going to increase your risk of cancer than it is to treat cancer. So, you know, like for me, that's why I eat organic whenever possible. I detox my body. Um, I just do a lot of different things to support my body and I do it with my pets. And my one wish is always that more people would be aware of that because I don't think there's ever anything that guarantees your pet's safety from illness, but why not do the things now that will lower those chances? So I really, I totally appreciate that comment. And if you have any questions too about, I mean, like I say, say you do the poly pet, just do very, very, very small amounts of it. Um, you know, don't go like, don't go giving your dog really big doses of anything to detox it all at once because when they're pulling things out that can make them feel sick, but in the long run, it makes them so much better. Um, it's made a tremendous difference when I started giving them poly pet, their skin rashes went away, their eyes are brighter, their energy is better. Um, and I take the human form of that. Um, it, it, I take their supplements and their stuff is really awesome. So I just try to share it with people because it's like, I think, you know, I've seen a lot of people, I spent a lot of time in an animal hospital because I had a very, very sick pet. So I was in and out of that animal hospital for five years. I mean, I don't, I donated thousands of dollars to the neurologist in his name and put a beautiful little plaque on the wall for him because I was there all the time. Um, and I think that, you know, one thing that I saw was all these people that were sad about their pets. And sometimes when I'm giving my dogs their little detox supplements, I just feel like being like, guys, it takes it takes 30 seconds a day. It probably costs me 30 cents a day. And it's something that reduces my chances of my dogs going to the hospital. So, you know, I wish more people would do that because I didn't know about things like that. And I think it's hard to know what's a scam and what's not a scam, right? Like we hear about all this different stuff and you never know, is it good or is it bad? So trying to find something that really, really works um, is the important thing. So I personally, as far as dogs having um, seizures and having low blood sugar, I do think, especially when they're puppies, that they need to eat several times a day. And if you're getting a really, really small puppy, then the blood sugar issues could be more something to worry about. Um, that said, they do need to eat regularly. I don't necessarily think mine need to have access to food 24 seven. They usually eat two to three times a day. Um, and if your dog is old enough, which it sounds like you're really smart, you already know to get a dog that is old enough, then, um, you should be, you should be fine with it. It's still good to watch, but I, I think that a lot of the people, and I would like to hear from you guys too. I personally think that a lot of people that are experiencing blood sugar issues with their puppies are probably getting puppies 
that were separated from the mothers too young. They're probably not 12 weeks old. Um, and I, I hear a lot of people that come on and they're like, oh, I'm getting a puppy and it's seven weeks old. And I'm like, oh, that makes me so sad. You should never get a puppy when it's seven weeks old. Um, I think people don't know any better. Sorry, guys, I have dog hair on my nose. I think people don't know any better and that's why they would get a puppy that young, but you're going to run into a lot of health issues when you separate that baby from its mama too young. So I'm glad that you're doing it later. Um, I think too, and I'm, first of all, I'm so sorry that you lost your, your puppy in December. I think I saw your comment. I was on today replying to comments. And I also let you know that I have a video up there about coping with pet loss, because I know you're still coping with pet loss. So if you feel like watching it, just know it will make you cry because I cried when I was making the, the video just talking about my my puppy Teddy that I lost four years ago. Um, and I wanted to do it for people because I know that they lose pets. I, my viewers are on here losing pets all the time. And so I wanted to make that video, but man, I couldn't, I couldn't get through it without just crying nonstop because it is so hard. Um, you know, I'm almost thinking maybe I will do a video about what I do for longevity in my dogs. Um, you know, it's like the, the mushrooms that I do. So I learned about the mushrooms from my human friend. That's a doctor. And um, she let me know that in Japan, they actually treat, so they give cancer a lot of times traditional treatments, and then they also treat it with mushrooms. And she said, you know, Megan, you have, you're prone to kidney cancer because of the toxins you've been exposed to. Why don't you take these mushrooms now just to try to help your body have less of a chance to get cancer? And I was like, sounds good. It's so easy to take it. Um, I just add it to my supplements and I take it every day. And so they came up, I'm going to show you guys too. So they came out with, let's see, oh, my husband puts my things away. So I may not, may not be able to find these if he can, oh, he didn't hide them too far. Sorry for the slamming guys. I have metal cabinets. So this is what I give my dogs for cancer prevention and immune support. This is a brand called Real Mushrooms. They are and it is, first of all, because they're made with liver. So when you open these, they smell so good and the pets all come running. Um, I personally, I think they say one shoe per dog. Do not give your dog one shoe. They will be so sick. It's too much detoxing. Um, I cut them into like 20 little pieces and they get a 20th of, you know, a little chew because too much of a good thing is a bad thing, but um, they will eventually probably be able to build up to taking, I, I bet you they'll take like a fifth of a chew per day. I don't think they'll ever, because they're so tiny, need to get an entire chew per day. But um, I'm going to put a video like that together. I know it might not be for everyone, but I feel like most of us are on here. You guys wouldn't be on here if you did not love your dog so much. Like every single person, if I see, I see how many people are watching this. You wouldn't be on here if you didn't love your dog, period. There's no one on here that's that's not treating their dog like the, you know, little prince and princess that we all feel that they are. They're our best friends. They're our companions. So anyway, I'm going to do that video because even if it helps 10 people, it helps 10 people. And that makes me really happy. Um, oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, Elena. Yeah, this is my real hair. It feels... It feels nice. I just, I had to get the extensions out. They were so grown out that there were little beads down here and I have pretty thick hair. I just had them in to add some blonde to my hair and living in a trailer. It's like, whatever is easiest is the best thing, but I really appreciate that. It feels nice to have my real hair. Um, oh my gosh. So you, it says, will do. Thank you for all the info. We had a mold issue here a couple years ago. And now I wonder if that contributed to it. So, I mean, short answer probably did um if you've seen any of my other and if you've seen any of my other videos i got sick i was never sick in my entire life until um a, a really expensive apartment that my husband and i rented in boston had a massive flood and um the water was rushing through uh the lobby like a waterfall it went through the elevators and they didn't clean it properly so I had perfect health and I went, to, you know, from perfect health to so sick, I could barely get out of bed in two weeks. And unfortunately, regular doctors are not able to 
deal with mold. They don't, they only know mold as an allergy thing. So unless you go to a more specific doctor, like a functional doctor, um, your doctor, and I'm not trying to say anything bad about doctors. I think doctors are great. I appreciate our medical system, but regular PCPs will be say, you know, um, they had liver issues, kidney issues, you know, you name it. And all the while I was sick too. And finally, when Teddy passed away, I had someone come in and inspect because it seemed like we could not all be sick. And so sure enough, it did have to do with our, um, you know, with our apartment, but not that anybody, not that any vet was ever going to say to me that it did have anything to do with it, but Lola had a stroke at that apartment. Teddy came out of remission from his autoimmune. Lola got pancreatitis. Poppy's um, Poppy's liver levels were off. Alfie hospitalized for his liver. Um, I was sick every single day. Every single day that I lived in that apartment, um, it felt like I had a stomach bug. And once I got, I got it remediated because I thought I could fix the problem. And I was very naive when it started. And I thought, oh, well, I'll just fix the apartment. I don't want to move. And fortunately, that wasn't really how it works. So that's why we are living and traveling in a travel trailer right now because that's what it took. But on the bright side, it's quite a few years later and things like, I don't know, like this seems really vain, but I look nice again and my eyes aren't as bloodshot as they used to be. And my youthful face is coming back and my dogs are like Lola's able to walk better and, you know, their eyes are clearer and their scabs are gone. So things do get better, but, um, there definitely, definitely can be a, um, a, a link to mold and cancer. Um, if you start to do the research for humans, you'll see that there can also be a link to mold and cancer. There can be a link to mold and Alzheimer's, mold and Parkinson's. There's a lot of different things, even mold and um, mental illness, anxiety, sleeplessness. There's so many different links to different things that nobody would ever really put two and two together. And that's why when I see someone's house and it's moldy, I'm like, you gotta fix that because you cannot have these extra things that can happen afterwards. The good thing is you can turn a lot of it around, but the bad thing is we don't usually know that when it's happening. Um, Simply Sophie says, the former owner of my Yorkie gave her the worst, cheapest food possible, and I am trying to make her better inside and out. I'm going to check out Polly Pet for sure. Um, that sounds, first of all, thank you for adopting her. Thank you for taking such good care of her, Simply Sophie. That is so awesome that you have her. Um, yes, some different ideas for you. First of all, like just as a human that deals with illness, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight on how I treat myself. If you want to add something in as a supplement, just do it gradually for your pup. Um, so like, say you want to add the poly pet, I would say add, you know, one of the supplements at a very low dose, give your dog several days to see how it's feeling and then add another supplement. So never add like two supplements the same day or anything like that. Um, my godmother always said slow and steady wins the race. And when you're overcoming illness, it is so true because even too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. So just slowly do it. So I love the poly pet. I love the ever more food that I've got in the links. Um, poly pet actually just came out with a new product as well. It's a vitamin and mineral supplement and I am ordering that. So when we go back to we're going to be back at our more like permanent RV park that we're going to stay at for, I don't know, like four weeks or something and we can ship packages. So poly pet is going to be sending me their new product. I'm excited to use that one. Um, but minerals and vitamins are important too, because it's going to help to fill up your dog's body with things that they need instead of where they're going to be storing things that they don't need. So for instance, I have read before that people that are deficient in certain vitamins and minerals tend to store more Roundup, or I, I forget what the chemical name is. It's glycophosphate. I forget how you say it, the pesticide that is on a lot of foods. So people that are mineral deficient tend to store more of that in their bodies and their joints and things like that. So really you are what you eat and getting your good stuff in there blocks the bad stuff. But if there's one thing I would say that would be good. Yes. Polypet is great. High quality food is great. Exercise is great. Movement is great. Um, filter her water or give her filtered water. Our dogs drink smart water and then we put in the boost drops um, and we keep an air filter. Um, that's the, what guys, that's another video that needs to be made. The healthy things that I do to um, 
ensure my dog's health, you know, filtering their water, using organic products on the floor, things like that. It sounds so funny, but these things all matter. And I think we're all seeing that as people, you know, we're all seeing all these funny illnesses and, um, behavioral things and things that we didn't see a lot in the eighties. We're seeing a lot of different illnesses. And, um, I, for me, the only explanation is that our environment has changed so very much and that our food quality has changed. Um, a lot of the products have gotten so much more caustic that are around us. So really, it's nothing for us to freak out about because it is what it is. But, you know, doing what we can to keep ourselves and our pets healthy is just so important. And I feel like if anything, like I am an example that it can be done. You can get I mean, I was so sick, especially this summer. I was so sick that I didn't think I was going to get better at one point. And now it's like, I'm not all the way better, but every single day I get better and better and I can come on here and chat and just do so much more stuff. So it feels great. Um, I'm going to let her sit up for a second. She's like, mom, you're really talking a lot and it's really annoying me. I'm sorry, lolies. I'm sorry. I talk a lot, don't I? Um, Marcy says, thanks for the holistic info, my Yorkies. See a holistic vet. Oh, that's so smart. And we had to go through some detoxing. I have supplements from Dr. Karen Becker. That is so awesome. And I'm so glad that you did that. I, I wish every single pet owner would detox their pet because our pets are being exposed to, I think I read somewhere that our pets are exposed to like 50 times more Roundup than we are. Because think about like if you walk, you know, if I walk my pets on green grass, guess what's probably on the green grass and who's to say when chemicals go away, who's to say what's on any road that we walk our dogs on. And then they're licking their paws and, you know, they're not showering every day like we are. So it is so important. And I love that you do it. Um, how did your dog feel when your dog or your Yorkies rather were detoxing? Did they feel okay? Did they go through any periods where they felt a little bit worse and they, then they felt better, which is a really common thing for things to go through when they're detoxing. Um, when do I think it's safe to take that? Um, don't worry, you guys, just, you know, you can ask me, I, I wouldn't care if you did ask me the same question. And also just know that a lot of people are coming and going on these live streams. So if you ask a question later on, totally fine. It's, it's going to give someone else the information. I think it's fine to start a dog on that at any age, as long as you're getting your dog after 12 weeks old. So if I was getting like an eight week old puppy, I wouldn't be giving it detox supplements because well, I just wouldn't be getting an eight week old puppy anyway. But um, if you were to start your, your puppy on things like that, I would still give it a few weeks just to be in your house before you would do that simply because it's so new to your dog. Um, the other thing, and I don't know if I've told you about this, but guys, the one of the supplements that I keep, which is called Renew, and that is a carbon binder. Carbon binders are similar to activated charcoal. I keep that around for emergencies as well. And um, I'm not a vet, so I can't really tell you exactly what to do in an emergency. But when, since I know sort of about being poisoned, because that's what mold toxicity is, it's when your body is poisoned, I know that carbon can pull things out of your body. And so my cat got into a succulent and was throwing up and I gave him a really nice dose of binder. And I gave him that binder. Obviously, if anything worse, I would have brought him to the vet. So I'm not saying, you know, don't bring your dog to the vet ever or anything like that. But it was a great thing to have in an emergency. I put it into a little bowl with a bit of water, sucked it into a child's syringe and just shot it right into his mouth. And um, he, his diarrhea was really bad and it stopped within 12 hours. So it was very, very, very effective. And I dosed it to him for five days. Um, Lola's like my, I'm not even going to sit with you anymore. Um, I know it's heartbreaking. I'm just seeing your comment. And so sorry if it makes you cry when you watch it, but it does have some little ideas for how I coped like a beautiful, beautiful memory bear that I had made with Teddy's things. And I've shown the memory bear on my live stream before, but it is one of my most just treasured possessions. It looks just like Teddy. I can give it so many hugs and um, it's made with Teddy's clothing. So my mom put it together, but they have them on Etsy and it just has some different things. So grab some tissue if you watch the video though, because I'm just telling you, even I cry when I watch it. So, um, but it's still really comforting and it just gives you some ideas. Um, Deborah, hello, Deborah. It's so nice to see you. Thank you for joining. Deborah says, 
in, in the doctor's parking lot. Oh my gosh, you are such a doll. Thank you so much. <laughs> you guys are amazing. I feel like I'm never on here at the time that I say I'm going to be as well. So I was doing my chores. We went on a long walk and then I came back and I am the one that empties the tanks in our RV. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but basically your plumbing, you have to go and like open lever and flush out your tanks and things. So I try to do some maintenance too. Since we do live in an RV, I help my husband and I, I feel like I'm the only woman that I've ever seen. I'm sure there's other women doing it, but I always feel so funny when I'm outside. Like everybody's like, why is that lady doing her, her maintenance on the RV? But just because I do. Um, bye, Deborah. I hope you have a great doctor's appointment. Thank you for saying hello. And I will make a video on that. I think it would be really helpful for people. And again, everybody might not be into that, but I wish everybody would be into it because once you go through what we went through with our pets, you really realize that any little easy thing that you can do for longevity, you want to do it. Um, it says my male Yorkie went through some diarrhea and hair shedding, but both are well. That's so good. And I don't know if your vet told you this or not, but you, when you're detoxing, so if you become symptomatic, you usually want to reduce the dosage and, um, oh, Lola, she does not feel like being brushed today, guys. She's not having it. But usually if your pet does become symptomatic, when you are detoxing, you want to give it a break and then start out with a smaller amount. Sometimes there's a little bit of stomach upset or something that could happen, but as much as possible, the, the goal when you're detoxing is usually not to have any symptoms. So if you start to have any symptoms, it's always good to take a break. Um, so if I'm, as you guys may know, I've been detoxing myself for quite some time and I can only do it as quickly as I can do it while I still feel great. So if my skin starts really being um, super inflamed or I start getting headaches or really tired, it usually means that my body needs a few days of rest from detoxing. Um, and what does detoxing mean? For me, it means I take um, supplements that are binders that help me to detox. Um, I take a supplement that helps my mitochondria to work, which I didn't even remember what mitochondria was when this started, but it helps the basic energy levels in my cells. And when my cells are working, my body's more able to get toxins out. Um, I go in my sauna for detoxing. That is pretty powerful. Um, and I recently also did a really cool thing when we were in Scottsdale called Electrons Plus. And it was the most interesting thing. So it was pulsed electromagnetic frequency, um, which it, usually I go on a beamer mat. You guys might have seen higher dose mats as well. I also put my dogs on the higher, or, or rather my beamer mat for their detoxing. Um, it helps to lower inflammation and it helps to aid in recovery, which they all need. Um, but this treatment that I did was a much, much stronger dose of um, electricity through my body and you could really, really feel it. So they sent it through my arm and my hand would start to move. They sent it through my other arm, my other leg. And for whatever reason, this leg is not connecting. I could feel the electricity, but it wouldn't move. Uh, I did another treatment, it moved a little bit and now it's moving sort of involuntarily on its own. So I still need a few more treatments, but it was a heavy duty treatment that detoxed me a lot. And basically sounds funny, but it recharged the battery of my body. So it's working on overdrive now. So there's some really interesting stuff out there that I would have thought was not real a long time ago. And uh, some things are a hoax. I will say that very, very hard. You have to really research when you're thinking about taking any supplement um, and, and, you know, making sure that it really makes sense for you and consulting your doctor. But um, there are some good things out there and they are helpful. So it's pretty interesting. Hello, Brie. It's so nice to see you. Oh my gosh. Hi. I haven't seen you in ages. And it's really because I haven't been on here that much. Um, and what I was saying at the very beginning is that living in our little trailer, doing my live streams, it's so funny. They tend to be at the last minute, especially if we're traveling a lot. And um, it can be a little bit challenging because, you know, we have my husband and I just have this little space like this table here is where my husband and I spend a lot of our time. So it's a little bit challenging to do a live stream because most of the time I'm like, Jeff, you need to go somewhere. He, I mean, he could sit during a live stream, but I think it's so much more fun when I'm just a little bit more comfortable to chit chat and talk about different things. Um, how have you been though, Bri? I haven't seen you in so long and um, 
I'm, I'm doing really well and Jeff is doing really well and our babies are doing really well too. No, Brie. Oh my gosh. Brie says, oh, I lost my beat. December 26th. It has been so very difficult. Oh, I am so sorry, Brie. I feel like everybody is losing their babies right now and you took such good care of your baby. I am so sorry to hear that. Um, guys, if you have not met Brie before, she is one of the sweetest people that has taken such good care of her baby. She did so much research on how to take the best, best care of her, which is why you got her to be 17 years, 17 and a half years. But it, I mean, it's just, there's nothing harder than losing your baby. I mean, I've been through it and there's nothing harder. I'm so sorry. That's so recent. It's only, we're only a little bit more than halfway through January. So you're, you're not even an entire month through losing your baby. I'm really sorry, Brie. It's really nice to have you here. And I'm really, really sorry to hear that. I can only imagine that you're still sleepwalking because that is how it was for me where you can just barely function. Um, and I'm four years out from losing Teddy and I miss him so much. Oh, I don't know if you watched my video on pet loss yet, but it, it'll make you cry. We were just talking about that video. It'll definitely make you cry. And unfortunately for all of us great pet owners, it's something that we're all going to go through and it's so hard for all of us. Jackie says, so sorry for your loss. Thank you, Jackie. Lola, can you stay still for just a minute, please? I'm trying to get this other eye. She's got a good amount of stuff here. There we go. Oh, Brie, you're so sweet. I'm so sorry. Hmm. See if you can get one of those beautiful memory bears made. If you've got some things, you've seen my memory bear. Have you, Brie? I don't know if you've seen my memory bear of Teddy. I have a memory bear of Teddy, and I have a memory bear that's made from my little brother, Ian, who we lost when I was 26 as well. And they are my most, um, my most special possessions. I mean, we can't have much because we have just this little trailer as you guys, it's not little, it's actually really big, but little compared to uh, the house that we'll get when we get a house. And um, even though we can't have a lot of possessions, I always have my special bears with me because um, I don't have anything with me that's more special than they are. It looks like this might be as much, um, as much grooming as this little princess gets today because she doesn't really feel like being groomed today. She looks still beautiful. So when we were in Arizona, um, I and Mary, so Jeff is from a pretty large Mormon family in Arizona. And he's not, my husband is not Mormon, although he was Mormon growing up. And um, his family is lovely. They are truly so kind, so nice, so generous, um, so inclusive. And um, whew, there's a lot of dog hair on my hand right there. I better watch out. They were so nice to include me in a lot of things. But what's also wonderful is there's a lot of children because he has such a big family. And um, so one of my little great nieces, I'll just call her my niece, she loved the animals so much. And she came over so many times to play with the dogs, to play with the cats. And um, just she really, really loved her time with me. And I really loved it because for those of you that don't know, I'm 46. I didn't meet my husband until I was 38. And um, I didn't have kids. I wanted to have kids, but just the timing was off and I didn't want to rush having kids. So I have, I have these kids and they're so wonderful, but it's so fun being there because I get to borrow the kids and babysit and spend time with them. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's really nice. So I'm looking forward to living there and getting to spend more time with the kids, which will be so fun because for me, they don't have to be my kids. Um, they can just be kids that I can borrow. Um, and they are really, really lovely, special kids. And I have to say that when I left my, I had a few, you know, favorite nieces, if you will, even though I love all of them. And when I left, I, I was really sad to say goodbye to them for now. So they are really wonderful and they're going to be a pretty amazing part of when I get to live in Arizona. So I think this might be a little tight because I can see the whites of Lola's eyes right here. Let's loosen this up a little bit. 
Um, let's see. Do do you feel dogs, puppies? Do you feel dogs, puppies do okay on their own without a little dog companion? We have a kitty under a year, but I'm curious about your opinions on an only dog child versus one with dog siblings. Um, I think it's so funny that you say that. I think that they definitely can do okay. Um, one thing that we've you know, my dogs don't play with each other very much. They don't. So you would think that they would play all the time. They really never have. And honestly, they love the companionship of a person. I think they can be okay like that. I really do. But conversely, we did wind up. Did you guys see the new kitten that we got recently? I don't know if, Brie, have you seen that I have a new kitten? Um, we got Simba a friend. And we, so it's so funny. I always thought cats were fine on their own. But when when we had, we had a bit of a debacle this summer. Our first trailer, this is our second trailer. Our first trailer didn't work out at all. And I actually couldn't stay in it. And, um, we wound up having to live with my mom because we didn't have anywhere to live because we had sold our, our beautiful condo in the city. And my mom has two cats and her cat became friends with, um, my cat. And I have to say my cat was so, so happy. And he was sad when we left and he seemed to be in kind of a bad mood. And my husband and I finally talked about it and we were like, we're bananas. We're totally bananas, but we think he needs a dog or oh, sorry, a cat. And he has been, I've never seen him so happy. He grooms his cat. He kisses him. He hugs him. He cries. She wants to get down. She's like, I'm done with being in this video. Sorry, Lola. Um, he cries if he cannot be near his cat or if he can't find him. So he really has loved um, being with with his with his brother. He's loved it so much. Um, Bree says, "I did watch your videos, and yes, it's adorable. <laughs> it's adorable, bear. Oh, you did see it. I'm sorry to have this sad topic, but we all deal with it. Oh my gosh, don't be sorry. It's we do all deal with it, and that's." the thing about the video that I made, you know, I kept struggling, Brie, because I was like, man, I feel funny making like a sad video on YouTube. But you know what? That is life. That's what happens. You, we love our puppies and we lose our puppies. I mean, there's no way around that it's going to happen to all of us and it happens in life and it's sad. So please don't apologize for having something sad happen, Brie. We're here for you. If you're sad, we're here for you. If you're happy and you don't ever have to apologize for being sad because truthfully, I mean, sadness is just a part of life that we're all going to have to go through. Um, and we can have sadness for different reasons. And there's nothing wrong with being sad. You know, I would think it would be so strange if you weren't sad right now. Um, so it just makes perfect sense to me. So please don't apologize in any way. Um, I still, it says, oh, you cut off her top knot. That was so sweet. Oh, my gosh. You are such, you are such a loving mama. Brie, I still need to show you my kitten because I don't know if you saw it. And if you guys haven't seen him, you need to see my kitten too. I know you like Yorkies, but come on. You sleeping? Are you sleeping? He is a little butterball. This is Sasha. So for those of you that don't know, I have a cat and his name is Simba. And this is Simba's butterball little half brother. Um, he eats so much and, um, he, I would say this cat eats probably every half an hour. And when we were driving to get to this park, he, I think we were, we had driven for two hours. We were about to start for lunch, stop for lunch. And my husband, um, opened up some banana chips and this guy went absolutely crazy. Bananas, actually. He started meowing and clawing me and crying and trying to get to the banana chips and he was just so so starving so I did tell Jeff that from now on I can't believe I think he's as beautiful as Simba I didn't think it was possible and I didn't think that I could love a cat as much as Simba but we love him so much and we love to see our boys together so they cuddle all the time and Simba's always he's always grooming you he's always taking care of you he really loves this guy so even though we are you know, officially crazy people. And you can see, so I think Simba, when he was this age, was about three pounds lighter than he is. See his little body? He's like a little bear. Just that, what a good guy. What a good guy. Thank you so much, Bree. So we weren't planning on getting another, another cat, but 
um, Simba seemed lonely for another cat. He would always go. We kept the cat separate when we were staying at my mom's house and, and Simba would try. So he would cry outside the door to get to them and he would just sit with them and he was such a good boy. And then he was so sad when we separated them. And I had asked about a kitten for a friend thinking that we would probably get Simba a kitten in, we thought we would get him a kitten in two years or something like that. But the breeder that we got Simba from said, by the way, I've got these two kittens left and then I'm retiring. And so we decided to go ahead and get one of them because we really loved her and we thought she did such a beautiful job with Simba. So we got this kitten. So that's how we got him. Um, thank you so much though. He's a little baby. Did we, did we have issues introducing the Yorkies to the kitty? So, and this is funny too. We didn't have any issues. I will say that when, so when I got Simba, which was two years ago, if you guys have been watching me for two years, it was two years ago when I got my first cat. And that was a very hard introduction. He was super, super sweet. He never, you know, Lola would try to bite him. He never got mad if Lola tried to bite him or anything like that. Um, but they chased him. And it was about two weeks of either I was I was leaving him in a separate room, I was watching them full time, or I had an assistant and she would wait until I got home from work so that they were never alone. And it was a kind of a long time. And then they got along fine. This guy came home. I actually flew. We were staying just outside of LA and I flew back to Boston on a Sunday, had a driver take me from the airport to New Hampshire, pick Sasha up. And then I took him back on the six hour flight from, um, you know, back to LAX. He and Simba instantly got along. So Simba, Simba saw him and it was so funny. Simba was a little bit afraid of him and he ran away and he was hiding, but then they instantly got along and Simba just, I mean, they play, they play all the time. It's their favorite thing to do. And by the next morning, Simba was giving the kitten baths and things like that. He gives him lick baths. Um, and, the first day, the dogs barked at the kitten a little bit. The second day, they were kind of interested in him. By the Basically, by 24 hours with the kitten, the dogs didn't care about him at all. So it was really wonderful because I was trying to figure out how we were going to do it in a trailer. There's just not that much room to separate them. But he got along so well with them right away. And what was really cute, um, when the dogs tried to go after the cat the first day, Simba, our bigger cat, actually protected this guy. He put his body in between this guy and the um, and the dogs. So he was just a, yeah, you got a really nice big brother, don't you? You are so nice. He is such a cuddly little baby cat and I love him so much. Sometimes I wish that he could stay little forever because he is so cute. Um, but we are definitely full. Yeah, we're full of pets now. We can't have any more. No, we can't. Um, so they got along really, really well. And we love him a lot. I don't know where Simba is. I think he might be, there's a bed upstairs and he might like, we go up some stairs and we've got another bed. So we have one bed over there. We have one queen, queen bed here, one bed here. And then this actually turns into a bed. Um, we fold this table up and this turns into a bed. And when I first got him for a few nights, I slept with everybody on the bed just in case any of the dogs tried to get down. Um, I didn't want them to break their legs jumping out of bed if they were trying to catch the cat. But honestly, everybody was just really calm. It was so, so nice. So yeah, he's a little baby. I'll see if I can show you. Do you guys want to see how big Simba is? I don't know if you want to see the difference, but it looks like, like when you see this guy, you kind of think, oh, he's really big. And then you see Simba and Simba is, he's just so much bigger. So that is kind of the update with what, what's been going on with everybody. But um, the dogs are still doing super, super well with their traveling. And um, Lola is just, she's getting, I'll show you Simba too. Let me find out where my guy is. Do you want to go here maybe? Let's see if we can find your brother. I bet you he's, if, I, if he's not there. Oh, I see him. He's sleeping in a backpack. Sammy's. Come here. Come on, Sammy. I'll show you off. Oh, come on. Come on. You got to come out. How do I get you out? No, he really doesn't think coming out of his backpack. <laughs> Here he is. Just so you can see, this is Sasha's. Hi, Sasha. This is Sasha's sleepy half-brother Simba. Yeah, don't worry. Sasha's right behind me. I've got your kitty. You've got your kitty. Yes, you good boy. Hi, Sasha. Come and sit with me and Simba. 
he I have never seen this cat love anything as much as his kitten. When he can't find his kitten, he cries and runs all over and just takes care of him. And we just, we love these kitties. I'm not sitting on you a little bit. Oh, he's got to go. There he goes. <laughs> okay, come here. And then just to precise reference, here's little Sasha. So his tail will get really fluffy like Simba's later on. It starts really small like this, but he has the most lovely little personality and they lose so much hair. So all my clothes are always covered with hair and we have to vacuum twice a day, but um, we love them so, so much. Guys, it was so nice to talk to you today and Brie, I'm going to be thinking about you and I'm sending you my prayers and my love and one day at a time is really all that we can do with any of our with any of our little sad I don't even say it with our sad feelings from losing our most beautiful companions. Um, but just every single day, wake up and do your best and be kind to yourself and know that we are definitely thinking about you. And it looks like my Yorkies are talking over there as well. Um, but we're thinking about you and everybody on here is thinking about you. I don't know why my Yorkies are barking right now. But it was really nice to talk to you guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to just jump into the comments later. Um, I've been trying to set aside a little bit of time every single morning for um, getting on and answering my comments again now that we're back on a schedule. And just wanted to say I really enjoyed talking to you guys. It always feels um, always feels like a little bit of home when I get to talk to you guys online. So I don't know why it is, but it somehow makes me feel connected when I have that consistency. So thank you for coming on and saying hello. Thank you for your incredible kindness on here and um, for caring about your puppies so much. I love it so much. Animal people are my people. So guys, stay healthy and stay beautiful. And I will talk to you guys later. And Simba and Sasha, Poppy, Lola, and Alfie all saying goodbye and have a beautiful day. Bye guys. Thank you so much.